Hi, I'm Ashley Adamson, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit today about like what it's like to be transitioning later in your timeline. I am at the almost five year mark. I think my five year mark is coming up in about five days. And uh, I, you know, it's, I've just been through so much and so much change. And wherever you are in your transition, it's quite a journey, right? Like you have already been, even if you're a month into your transition, you are already on a journey, wouldn't you agree? So um, yeah, I wanted to talk about what it's like in the later stages. I just made a video on the overall timeline, which uh, you can also see in this nice messy graph here. Um, but like, this is a graph I made for my book. And um, if I just remove all of the stuff that I drew on top of it, this is essentially the graph. Things start out neutral. It gets really good. It gets really hard. You kind of move through the trough of despair and eventually make your way out of the negative zone. This being the de line of demarcation. This all here is the hard bits. Um, but like, you know, where are you on your transition and your timeline? And I'm imagining you're probably not five years on your transition or later, but that could be possible. Um, something that I've been wondering about is like, am I even, is trans even a thing anymore for me? Is like, how much does trans matter and where does it matter in your life? Um, where does it have its, its, its impact and where doesn't it? And depending on where you are in this timeline, it kind of affects you differently. For example, getting misgendered early in my timeline. Um, I'm just gonna make another like drawing here because maybe this will be a little bit better. Let me get a little one of these here. So um, kind of like, no, I want a square, thank you. Yeah, so if you kind of like have these big macro steps of like your transition, then like you kind of have the beginning stage, you have uh, <laughs> the mid game, and then you have the late game. Like if you like playing games, I do. Uh, the early game, I, d I don't know what the term, of, I don't know what the term of this is called, but like you have the early game, the mid game, and the late game, right? And <laughs> late game trans kind of, kind of also has late, late game, and you have early game here, which is also kind of like, what I would say is before you, you realize your trance or before you even start taking any action. So this is like a smaller stage. And then this is kind of like, maybe there's just less story, the, the end stage to your transition. For me, this is going to be a vagina. Once I get a vagina, I'm done. Like I don't have anything else that I need to do. And right now I am struggling or not struggling, but most of my effort in this late game stage where I'm at, and let's say this time scale is about um, five years. Well, okay, I was non-binary before I was transitioning. So let's just say this is eight years. So uh, year one, year zero over here for the programmers, zero years, and then uh, we'll say eight years is kind of here. Um, like, here's where I'm at. I'm kind of like, this is going to be at the seven year mark and I am on this timeline. I'm right around here. So like, I still have a lot of visits to electrolysis. I fly to Los Angeles to do that, which is just like another time sink. It also costs money. And then eventually I'm going to have the vagina and then there'll be like months and months and months of recovery. And then at some point I'll say, well, I guess that's it. That, that's it. I, I've transitioned. <laughs> We're done. Let's just wipe our hands and let's move on with our life. Right. But that's actually going to be a, a pretty sad thing for me at least. And I don't know how it would be for you. Like, how would you feel once your transition is done? Um, and where are you currently in your transition? Because depending on where you are, your reaction to saying goodbye to this transition may be different. For example, I remember when I was super early in my transition, like around he here, where I was just like, can we just accelerate as fast as we can to the end game? Can we just get that? Can we get that over with? Can we just be done with that? Um, 
But now that I'm towards the end of my transition, yes, I still feel like I want to be done with my vagina and get that out of the way. But I am also kind of sad that I don't have this big, massive personal growth development project uh, in front of me. The most exciting thing for my transition, and I'd love to hear what it has been for you, is all these gender euphoria moments and firsts. All these firsts in your transition are super exciting. Like the first time you put on a dress, the first time you feel absolutely femininely divine, um, the first time you go out on a date as your true self, your name, someone gendering you correctly. Like people call me Ashley all the time. People gender me correctly most of the time. <laughs> Don't want to say all the time. Doesn't always happen. Um, most of the time. And that doesn't really make me feel more valid. Like people can actually misgender me and I'm fine because my inner identity has become so solid and so solidified that yes, I'm a woman and that's it. That someone can't really throw me off my balance of who I am. Does that make sense? Like where are you on your transition and where you're going through this? And like, think about your earlier stages in your transition where you were at and um, how people would affect you if they were to misgender you or to not respect how you wanted to be seen versus where you are now, now, which is like maybe people, you're, you have changed your friend group, you're accepted by your friend group, you're getting gendered correctly by your friend group, maybe even you're dating or seeing someone, you've come out to everyone, so there's a lot less fear around who you are and what you're what you want to be. Um, and everything is more just like aligned. Um, for example, when my dad was not really accepting of my transition, but kind of just had, had to say, okay, like I'm going along with that. You, it felt like his approval, but had a little bit more weight into my own happiness. Not that it would prevent anything that I'm going to do because I was transitioning at 32. Um, but that, it would be nice if I had his support and I wanted, that made me want to make him understand why I was doing this and to learn how to accept it. Now where I'm at, I couldn't care less. Like if he doesn't like it or if he doesn't approve, like whatever, I'm still doing it. This is fine. And of course I still whatevered and did it and that was fine. But the emotional aspect, the inner aspect, I feel more resolute in who I am. I don't know if that makes sense. What about you? Like, how are you in terms of your resoluteness and your own confidence in your gender and how you experience it? I sometimes call, like, call this concept of passing to myself, like passing to you, passing to yourself can sometimes be more important than anything about passing to other people. And it doesn't even have to be, oh, like I'm read as a woman or I'm read as a man. For example, if you're non-binary, um, you need to pass to yourself as non-binary. This can mean that your doubts are, are quelled, that your insecurities around your own validity from yourself can be moved out of the way. This is probably one of the weirdest things about like how humans work, but have you ever seen someone get triggered by something uh, where they can just get suddenly upset? Like in, the internet is full of these, especially like Karens and, um, far right people and like far left, like there's some dumbass far left people. I'm sorry. I got to say this. Like, I hate the fact that they represent trans people and the left on social media because they ch like the right will cherry pick really idiotic, dumb left people and then make them look like they're the spokesperson for all of us and then make us all look like idiots. Um, I, I guess I am slightly left. I'd say I'm left of center, but I'd say most people would probably say that I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I look left. Like I like guns. Um, I'm kind of, I wouldn't say I'm conservative, but anyways, this is a whole nother topic. Politics is something that I try my best to keep mental health around because it's just, it's, it's frightening all of the things that can happen and all of the stuff that goes on around trans people. And it's not really healthy. I mean, like, how's your media consumption? Um, and how does that affect your own? Let's, let's take it back to the topic. Like, how does your media consumption affect your own perception of yourself, your own validity of yourself, and your own emotional well-being? 
like how much is your motivation to transition, for example, motivated to, to tell others about your transition versus yourself? Um, that, that's kind of something to think about. Um, but coming back to my own transition so we can talk a little bit about this timeline here, I'm kind of here. And so at this point, this feels like a checklist. This, my life is just full of checklists related to transitioning. Whereas uh, over here, when I started to kind of start my transition, this was all about expression and discovery and embracing my true self is what I would call it. And, and this kind of, most of this timeline here was probably kind of like around here was the most important. And if I were to shade this, it's like the most important here. And then it slowly starts to get less and less. I'm probably doing this wrong. I should probably just draw a cone, but it goes kind of like this, right? So, so over time, it gets less and less important. Like I've already embraced my true self by the mid stage and I already know who I am by the mid stage and I've already created alignment and expression. So like in the early stage, it's kind of like trying to find expressing myself truly, trying to discover myself truly, and then trying to embrace who I am. And then at some point you start to have this kind of overlap where you start to go, okay, now I know who I am I have discovered that and I, I'm knowing what I like and I'm learning how to express myself. And you kind of have this on ramp of like the next stage, which is sort of somewhere in the middle to late stage, which is like, how do I align my world so that I have expression correctly? So that might be voice lessons. Um, that may be like nuances of mannerisms that may just be, let me change my like legal name status that kind of stuff. Let me get my healthcare aligned. Let me tell my friends, let me come out to my family. There's kind of like this crossover point somewhere around here where, let me move myself here, where you kind of, you, you're no longer focusing on discovering as much and just like executing. And once you get into this later stages, it's less about doing any of these things so much as just like, okay, I've got the checklist items. Let's get them done. I got to do electrolysis. I'm not like questioning myself or feeling any of this or that. It's just, I got to do it. I got to get it done. Does that make sense? So like the reason why this is important to know is because you're going to go through different stages. You're going to experience different things as you move through um, life, as you through, move through life, accepting yourself and working through your transition and everything that you're going through is probably pretty normal, um, but you're not going to feel this way forever. And I want to remind you of that because when you feel like, um, when you feel like you're totally in the trough, when you feel like really beat down, when you feel like things are too hard, life is too hard, it's a temporary state of being. And I just want to remind you that because, um, it's just, it's such a shame, especially younger trans people. They don't understand that there's like time continues. Time, the, the, the beautiful and also terrible thing about time is time just doesn't stop. It doesn't stop, honey. So like as much as I want to preserve being young, I'm going to get old at some point. But at the same time, I'm also really excited to experience all of the progression of my work and, and, and harvesting the, the seeds that I'm, I'm planting now in my life and seeing what they turn into later. So like, you know, there's ups and downs and there's benefits and, and, and also like lack of benefits. I'm forgetting what the word downsides, um, to, to experience as, as you move through time. And like, as long as you can keep your eye on that moment, like, can you think back to the last time that you felt like really just down and that it felt like you couldn't get through it? but somehow you did, you made it to this video. You're still maybe doing, going through your upswings. Like the, that kind of motion, that movement, it happens constantly. So if you're feeling down, just focus on breathing, focus on moving through just the first immediate steps. Don't worry about five years out. Don't worry about two years out. But if you can orient yourself in a direction, and I kind of talk about this as, as finding your compass, right? Like it, you have a compass and you want to move in a direction and your goal is maybe 
this is what you feel your goal is. Your goal is over here. Um, so how do you move along this path? Sometimes you go this way. Sometimes you go that way. Sometimes you go that way. And you just kind of have to figure it out until you can reorient yourself and get exactly to where you want to be. And um, it's a lot of this is, is having faith. Like the forward momentum is having faith, believing in yourself, and like continuing to take steps. So I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below. And if you'd like to support me, please become a, join my membership program. Really appreciate your help. I'm Ashley Adamson. I'll see you in another episode soon. Bye.